What about polarization now? Suppose my input has two polarizations. Here my input had only one polarization and I was aligning my local oscillator to that polarization. But what if my input has two polarizations? Suppose I am doing polarization multiplexing or if my input has a uh, random polarization. Okay. Uh, do I keep controlling my uh, local oscillator uh, output? If the input, what if my input polarization keeps fluctuating? How do I keep controlling my local oscillator output? So, what we are going to discuss now will work for single polarization or dual polarization or polarization multiplex signal. So, what do you do here? You take your local oscillator, split the output of the local oscillator with a polarization beam splitter. And polarization beam splitter is a device which is made with two birefringent materials such that the two outputs are of two orthogonal uh, polarizations. So, you have uh, this is the perpendicular path and this is the parallel path, perpendicular polarization and parallel polarization. So, the output here is E yellow parallel polarization and the output here is E yellow perpendicular polarization. The E yellow parallel polarization gets fed into this coupler whereas E yellow perpendicular polarization gets fed into this coupler. The signal also does not matter whether it is single pore or dual pole you split the polar. So, polarization beam splitter is simply a polarization sorter. It uh, input could be arbitrary polarization the parallel part of the polarization is available in this output port and the perpendicular part of the ES perpendicular is available ES perpendicular is available in this port which you are feeding it into the second uh, directional coupler. So, you did not have to adjust any polarization the additional element you added is this polarization beam splitter and basically you are doing a polarization diversity scheme you are handling the parallel and the perpendicular polarization independent of each other right. So, you have two paths one for parallel polarization and the other one for perpendicular polarization and the rest is the same you take it through the 2 by 2 coupler take it through the balance receiver you get a delta I 1 corresponding to the first polarization you get a delta I 2 corresponding to the second polarization and ultimately you add up the currents if it is a single polarization transmission you add up the currents and process your data. If it is a dual polarization transmission do not add up you basically demodulate what is appearing in the two polarizations. So, uh, how does the math work? Your E s is again like last time A s e power j omega s t plus phi s. So, let us uh, represent theta uh, in this diagram. So, let us say theta is the angle with the principal uh, axis of the PBS the polarization beam splitter. Let us say this principal axis is uh, let us say this is the parallel direction and this is the perpendicular direction. Then E s parallel is A s uh, cos theta component of the signal and the perpendicular polarization is the sin theta component. Similarly, uh, E yellow you do not have to have cos theta and sin theta because that is something that you are controlling locally right. So, you could always have the um, local oscillator at an angle 45 degree with respect to the uh, principal axis of the PBS. What happens after this? Delta I 1 t is uh, here we are trying to figure out. Delta I 1 t is uh, what we had derived earlier and uh, delta I 2 t is also the same thing. One is the cos theta component, the other one is the sin theta component. Otherwise, there is no difference from the previous uh, derivation. So, the total I f current is uh, I 1 square plus uh, you, are, you are basically doing a sum square here. You will get something like this. And now, this I f power is becoming independent of the input polarization. So, you can not worry need not worry about aligning the polarization state of your uh, local oscillator. You get your output independent of the state of polarization of the input. What is uh, the next? Next we talk about. Uh, so, we have we have now resolved this issue that uh, you uh, that you need to keep aligning the polarization state of the local oscillator with respect to that of the input that issue is completely resolved. Let us move on to now a detection system where uh, we want to now extract the phase ok. And uh, let us say uh, we are trying to extract this in a homodyne system it is a homodyne detection system. Now, in a homodyne uh, detection system 
in a homodyne detection system, we know that uh, omega s is equal to omega l o. So, there is no i f frequency. So, the uh, arrangement is the same. We have a polarization diverse coherent receiver. Uh, we are now interested to find out uh, the phase modulated, the phase carried by the signal. There could also be amplitude modulation in the signal. So, you could have a s as a function of time. You could also have uh, phi s as a function of time. Both can carry uh, data. For instance, in a 16 quam modulation, you could have amplitude uh, also carrying information and also phase carrying the information and you are interested in detecting the both, detecting both. Uh, we are now trying to uh, address this uh, specific issue that when you have uh, phase modulation, uh, what about the phase noise of the laser and phase noise uh, of the transmitter laser and the phase noise of the local oscillator. So, we are representing the phase noise of the laser, transmitter laser uh, here and this is the phase noise of the local oscillator. And uh, the output of this uh, system is similar to what we had worked out. Uh, it is 2 R D A S A L O. Of course, because it is a, a homodyne system, uh, we can ignore this omega i f and you have this term of which delta phi s is something is of our interest. If you are thinking about a 25 gigabaud QPSK system, uh, delta phi s is changing at the rate of 40 picoseconds, very fast change because your data is getting modulated at that rate. What about uh, phi n, delta phi n? Now, delta phi n is something uh, which is the phase difference between uh, the noise terms corresponding to the uh, signal phase, uh, the signal and the uh, local oscillator. Now, look at the time scales. This is happening at 25 gigabaud 40 picosecond. What are the time scales at which this uh, delta phi n is evolving? This evolves at the time scale of the line width of the laser. And we know, let's say the line width of the laser is uh, 100 kilohertz. We have done this calculation before. We have actually calculated how many symbols after which the uh, signal starts getting distorted because of the phase noise of the laser. And we figure that that change, uh, the, the phase noise of the laser because of its random walk process is actually very slow. Okay. Uh, so, the point that we are trying to make is this phase noise if we can extract the uh, phase at the output, which is possible because uh, the strength of this actually is directly proportional to the delta phi s, right. So, if we can extract the phase of the uh, output uh, and do a low pass filter on it, which is what is shown here in this block diagram, the low frequency components are corresponding to the phase fluctuations of the laser itself. And of course, the highest frequency components are my corresponding to my data. So, uh, we cannot ignore this delta phi n t because it keeps changing with time and that uh, is spurious, uh, adds spurious noise to your uh, signal phase. So, you want to eliminate it and the way you can think of eliminating it is to low pass filter your output uh, data with the low frequency corresponds to the current fluctuations at low frequency would correspond to the phase noise of the laser. So, you extract that and then you feed it back to the local oscillator as a feedback system and try to control this phi NLO such that this phi NS minus phi NLO is, a is, is 0. How does one do that? Uh, you know that the phase of the laser, instantaneous phase of the laser can be controlled by changing the current, drive current of the laser. So, what you are hoping to do is the low pass filter output which represents the phase noise of your uh, signal, you extract with, uh, uh, with, a, uh, with a low pass filter and you feed it back to your local oscillator and calibrate the current changes corresponding to uh, the phase change, uh, calibrate the current changes to bring in phase change in the local oscillator intentionally so that this delta phi n becomes 0. This is the electronic feedback loop. It gets little complicated and it actually requires a complete uh, adaptive control system. So, uh, the alternative would be to do this in an optical manner.